What's up, you beautiful bastards? Hope you have a fantastic Thursday. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show, and let's just jump into it. And the first thing we're gonna talk about today is the battle for Twitter's soul that has people up in arms or cheering. And this whole story is around Twitter verification, just having that little blue check mark next to your name on Twitter. So some things to know. Now, originally Twitter had just chosen which users to verify, usually reserving the status for celebrities, public officials, and journalists. Then in July of 2016, they opened that status up to the wider public, allowing anyone to apply for a verified badge. But then last week, Twitter verified Jason Kessler, organizer of the August Charlottesville rally, and tons of users immediately complained. And after a lot of criticism, Twitter responded, verification was meant to authenticate identity and voice, but is interpreted as an endorsement or an indicator of importance. We recognize that we have created this confusion and we need to resolve it. We have paused all general verifications while we work and will report back soon. And personally, my response to this was I was happy about it. But not because of this Jason Kessler situation, but because my wife, she, she's been, she's applied and been denied verification eight times. And all this means is that she's going to be unverified for an even longer amount of time, and I can hold that over her head and make fun of her. Because that is what a marriage is about. Being petty and trying to annoy a person until you see which one of you dies first. They tell you it's about love and support, but that is a lie by the mainstream media. I apologize for that outburst. I'm running on no, no sleep, but a lot of caffeine. But back to the story. Jack Dorsey, the CEO of Twitter, then follows up, writing, we should have communicated faster on this yesterday. Our agents have been following our verification policy correctly, but we realized some time ago the system is broken and needs to be reconsidered, and we failed by not doing anything about it, working now to fix faster. Then yesterday, Twitter followed up, writing, update on our verification program and the actions we're taking. Verification has long been perceived as an endorsement. We gave verified accounts visual prominence on the service, which deepened this perception. We should have addressed this earlier, but did not prioritize the work as we should have. This perception became worse when we opened up verification for public submissions and verified people who we in no way endorse. We're working on a new authentication and verification program. In the meantime, we are not accepting any public submissions for verification and have introduced new guidelines for the program. Adding, we are conducting an initial review of verified accounts and will remove verification from accounts whose behavior does not fall within these new guidelines. And the newest version of reasons for removal include intentionally misleading people on Twitter by changing one's display name or bio, promoting hate and or violence against or directly attacking or threatening other people on the basis of all of these things, also supporting organizations or individuals individuals that promote the above, inciting or engaging in harassment of others, violence and dangerous behavior, and adding in accordance with the Twitter terms of service, Twitter may remove the verified badge and verified status of a Twitter account at any time. And following all of this, we saw the hammer come down. We saw multiple people have their accounts affected by this. And for the most part, it seems like many people that were hit were either white nationalists or far-right conservatives. Someone that we've featured on the show before, especially around Charlottesville, Baked Alaska was affected. He had his account permanently suspended. He, as you might imagine, was not happy about it, went on a nearly nine hour long YouTube live stream talking about it. And in that, he claimed it was unclear what exactly got him suspended, also pointing out that he hadn't tweeted in two days. But I will say, if you've ever looked at his account before, uh, there have been some, uh, some things you could point to over the past few years. And when asked about his suspension by media, Twitter spokesperson said the company does not comment on individual comments, but did point to Twitter's hateful conduct policy specifically, repeated and or non-consensual slurs, epithets, racist and sexist tropes, or other content that degrades someone. We then saw others like Richard Spencer, James Alsup, Laura Loomer, Tommy Robinson, Jason Kessler, all losing their check marks. And of course, as you'd imagine, the reaction to all of this is split. Some happy saying this is Twitter taking a stand against hate speech, but also you have people saying that this is censorship of conservatives. But on that note there, I do want to point out that when, when you're talking about people like Richard Spencer and Laura Loomer, you're not talking about everyday conservatives. Right, you're talking about extremes there. That said, an understandable argument I've heard is if you're going to go after the extremes of the people that are on the right, you have to go against the extremes that we end up seeing on the left. One example someone provided was of rapper Spose. He had a tweet this month where he said, I'm also fine with eliminating white people as a possible solution if that helps. Then in response to people calling him out, he wrote, as a white person, I'm pretty sure I can discuss the elimination of white people as a possible solution to the world's problems. I'm open to other solutions, but white people are clearly responsible for most of the world's problems. Which I will say is the weirdest version of, I'm a blank so I can say blank. It feels a little bit like you're saying, I'm a Jewish guy, so I can talk about, you know, the genocide of the Jews as a possible solution. It's incredibly debatable and very, very stupid. Obviously, I know that there are people out there that think that white people cannot be victims of things like this. But if we look to Twitter's guidelines, this goes against encouraging any form of physical violence against any individual or any group of people and or promoting hate and or violence against or directly attacking or threatening other people on the basis of race, ethnicity. So I'm just saying if this is going to be Twitter's big new move, this big push, it needs to be universal and not just targeted. As far as if this is censorship, uh, they are a private company, they're allowed to do what they want. As we've seen from people both on the left and the right, the market can decide to do something else. If there's enough people annoyed by this, not happy about this move, a competitor could gain from this. But a question I pass off to you is, is what is your takeaway here? Is this a good move or is this a bad move? I'd love to know your thoughts on this and what you're thinking in those comments down below. 
Hello. But from that, I want to share some stuff I love today. And today in awesome, brought to you by DeFrancoGrip.com. We've talked about the dbrand grip before. They've now officially launched their crowdfunding campaign. I've got one and it is as ridiculously grippy as they say. And these things are in high demand. All the perks sold out in less than six hours from my last mention. But they have now added a new exclusive perk to you beautiful bastards who missed out last time. Just make sure you go to DeFrancoGrip.com. You'll get 50% off the retail price and free shipping in North America. So if you want it, jump in while you can. And the first bit of awesome is we got a teaser for The Quiet Place. It's Emily Blunt and John Krasinski's new horror movie. Yes, please. Then we had Arnold versus the Megalodon. Poor little guy. Then we had the slow-mo guys giving us 4K slow-mo katana sword goodness. Then we got a teaser for The Strangers Pray at Night. And I'm so pumped for this movie. Uh, the first one was fantastic. It made me feel extremely uncomfortable and unnerved. The way the movie was able to scare you without just doing jump scares is just ah, so good. Excited for another round. Then Kurtz Gesack put out a video titled How Stupid Things Become Smart Together. Great video, fantastic channel. Always love to pimp them out. And if you want to see the full versions of everything I just shared, the secret link of the day, anything at all, links as always are in the description down below. And then let's talk about a heavily requested story, and that is a story around Jake Paul. And this isn't for a gossipy reason. This isn't like, my ex-girlfriend slept with my brother stuff that he's thrown out there. Love him or hate him, Jake Paul is a big player in the online space. Right, a lot of people just see him as like the former Disney guy that is a YouTube vlogger. He has also launched companies. One of the main ones is Team Dumb, which is powerful in its own right, but they also do things like they, they've recently partnered with Viral. So he's not just some guy, he is a big player in this space. And so because of his position in this space, that is why it's important to talk about the allegations that he he's abusive to people that work for him. Emilio and Ivan Martinez, otherwise known as the Martinez twins, recently came out in a video saying that they were leaving Team 10, that's Jake Paul's influencer collective, and they said that Jake Paul was a bully, claiming they go to sleep every night terrified, not knowing what kind of pranks and stunts Jake was gonna hit them with in the morning. Saying initially when Jake Paul brought them to LA, they didn't really speak good English, but then as they learned English, they realized Jake Paul was making fun of them, just saying mean things to them. To this, Jake Paul initially responded, I promise on my life that I've been publicly backstabbed and betrayed more than any person I've ever met. Hate to play victim and be soft, but it's crazy to me. I just want to change people's lives for the best. The truth always comes out and the great always shine through the lies. Team 10 then released a statement where it appeared they tried to paint themselves as the victim, saying Jake and Team 10 found Emilio and Ivan in the middle of Spain living in an unfortunate situation. Jake was fortunate enough to stay in Spain for several days and was incredibly upset with their living situation. They were all passionate about helping them and giving them an opportunity to help themselves and their family. They say they paid out of pocket for everything. They talk about how everyone was essentially a happy family and ultimately saying, we are all heartbroken to lose two members of our family. Jake is particularly hurt by this. He was the one that found them and put his time and resources into getting them to where they are now. We all believed in them, loved them, and supported them. Having that thrown in our face is a shame, and honestly, none of this feels like it's really coming from them. The Martinez twins then make another video. It's 27 minutes long. They go into more detail on what they consider the constant disrespect. They explain how they were essentially treated like second-class citizens. They're made to sleep in the living room for months, despite them asking if they could get their own room. They were constantly being woken up and pranked, which led to them being very anxious and scared to actually go to sleep. They say when they did get a room, Jake yelled at them if they tried to lock the door. At one point, they were actually allowed to build their own room in the house. But then they were told that it was illegal to have that room. Jake said that he was gonna pay someone to actually bring that room down. But what ended up actually happening was this. Good bye, Martinez room. They said they were extra sad about this because it wasn't done by professionals. All their fan art that they had on the wall was thrown out. Even when they said they were speaking proper English, that Jake would just be like, I can't understand you. Also, they alleged Jake called them beaners. He said to us, the, he was saying to us all the time, beaner. Like, we find out what was beaner, and we were like, how he's joking about that? Like, he cannot joke about that. Also using that as a play on words to call their fans Martiners. He also said that Jake manipulated them into doing things in videos that they didn't want to do. They alleged that Jake Paul and Team 10 kept their money hostage. And to this, Jake Paul responded and kind of sort of apologized. Here's a small piece of that. First of all, I'm so sorry to the Martinez twins. Nobody should ever feel bullied. And I, I truly apologize for not doing a better job as a leader and, and as a friend. Pure and simple, I owe you guys an apology. I understand how this could have gotten lost in, in translation. And my original like disappointment and reaction was based on the fact that we all assumed they were having fun and, and part of the pranking process and smiling and laughing. And I'll link to the full apology down below, but here, here's the weird thing about that apology. He seems disappointed and sorry that he hurt the Martinez twins, but but he says that it seems that everything was lost in translation. But in those videos, he doesn't address the, the Martinez twins saying that they weren't able to get access to the money they earned. And he also didn't address the accusation that he called the Martinez twins, essentially his employees at that point, beaners. And that's without us jumping into this sounding very similar to what former members of Team 10 have said 
said that uh, Jake is like. Now, ultimately, will this hurt Jake Paul? I actually don't think so. He's still getting three to four million views per video. It appears that YouTube has his back here as he is part of the YouTube Red program. His YouTube Red original series is currently airing on his channel. And so far, it doesn't appear that we've seen a response from YouTube. But as of recording this video, that's where we are now. And as far as my personal opinion on is what the Martinez twins saying true, I will say personally, as someone that has covered stories and scandals like this for many, many years, usually if you are accused of several things and you address several things, the things you omit are very, very telling. But I still don't think this is gonna hurt Jake Paul. Honestly, in our current news cycle, if news comes out about you and it's not that you bang someone or sexually harass someone, people are like, oh, okay, well, I guess he's not the worst. But that's said I pass the question off to you. What is your takeaway from this story? Then we got more sexual harassment and assault news today, and at the center of it is Al Franken. Senator Al Franken was outright accused this morning by Leanne Tweeden. She tweeted, I've decided it's time to tell my story, hashtag me too, and this was the thumbnail to the link she provided. Tweeden wrote an article about it. She also spoke about it on a radio show. In 2006, she was on a USO tour along with Franken, some country music artists, some cheerleaders. The MCs for the tour were Leanne Tweeden and Al Franken. He was a comedian at the time, not yet a senator. Tweeden says that Franken brought props with him. He wrote some skits, one of which included a kiss between the two of them, writing, I suspected what he was after, but I figured I could turn my head at the last minute or put my hand over his mouth to get more laughs from the crowd. Then she says on the day of the show, Franken approaches her, says they need to practice the kiss. They were alone backstage, writing, he said to me, we need to rehearse this kiss. I laughed and ignored him. Then he said it again. I said something like, relax, Al, this is an SNL. We don't need to rehearse the kiss. But then saying, I said, okay, so he would stop badgering me. We did the line leading up to the kiss, and then he came at me, put his hand on the back of my head, mashed his lips against mine, and aggressively stuck his tongue in my mouth. I immediately pushed him away with both of my hands against his chest and told him if he ever did that to me again, I wouldn't be so nice about it the next time. And according to Leanne, when they were on the stage performing the skit, they didn't do the kiss. She just turned her head so they couldn't do it. She also said she didn't tell anyone about it, that she also had no further voluntary conversation with Al Franken. She also says Franken drew devil horns on at least one of the photos she brought to autograph and that he would use petty insults. And then finally, at the end of the tour, she fell asleep during the 36 hour trip home. She said that was fine. She thought nothing of it until she looked through the CD of photos they were given. And that's when she discovered this photo. She also described her reaction, writing, I couldn't believe it. He groped me without my consent while I was asleep. I felt violated all over again, embarrassed, belittled, humiliated. How dare anyone grab my breasts like this and think it's funny? And after all of this came out, Al Franken responded saying, I certainly don't remember the rehearsal for the skit in the same way, but I send my sincerest apologies to Leanne. As to the photo, I clearly intended to be funny, but wasn't. I shouldn't have done it. And soon after that, he came out with a much longer statement, writing, the first thing I wanna do is apologize to Leanne, to everyone else who was part of the tour, to everyone who has worked for me, to everyone I represent, and to everyone who counts on me to be an ally and supporter and champion of women. There's more I want to say, but the first and most important thing, and if it's the only thing you care to hear, that's fine, is I'm sorry. I respect women, I don't respect men who don't, and the fact that my own actions have given people a good reason to doubt that makes me feel ashamed. But I wanna say something else too. After the last few months, all of us, including and especially men who respect women, have been forced to take a good, hard look at our own actions and think, perhaps shamefully for the first time, about how those actions have affected women. For instance, that picture. I don't know what was in my head when I took that picture and it doesn't matter. There's no excuse. I look at it now and I feel disgusted with myself. It isn't funny, it's completely inappropriate. It's obvious how Leanne would feel violated by that picture. And what's more, I can see how millions of other women would feel violated by it. Adding, coming from the world of comedy, I've told and written a lot of jokes that I once thought were funny but later came to realize were just plain offensive. But the intentions behind my actions aren't the point at all. It's the impact these jokes had on others that matters and I'm sorry it's taken me so long to come to terms with that. Well, I don't remember the rehearsal for the skit as Leanne does, I understand why we need to listen and to believe women's experiences. I am asking that an ethics investigation be undertaken and I will gladly cooperate. And the truth is, what people think of me in light of this is far less important than what people think of women who continue to come forward to tell their stories. They deserve to be heard and believed. And they deserve to know that I am their ally and supporter. I have let them down and am committed to making it up to them. And following this, Senator Chuck Schumer also called for Franken to be looked into, saying sexual harassment is never acceptable and must not be tolerated. I hope and expect that the Ethics Committee will fully investigate this troubling incident as they should with any credible allegation of sexual harassment. So that's where we are as of right now. And then there's a few things that I want, I want to kind of hit on here. The first is that with more and more of these sexual assault and sexual harassment stories coming out, I think that we, we do need, they're all bad, but I do believe that we need to treat these stories for what they are. And this has been on my mind recently from the Louis C.K. allegations and admission. I saw people writing, oh, Bill Cosby 2.0. No, not excusing what he did. Allegedly and admittedly whipped his dick out and jerked it off in front of women. Incredibly bad. But with the Bill Cosby allegations, you had drugging and what people were saying was rape. There are also levels to this. If Louis C.K. did that with 14-year-olds, with 16-year-olds, that's a different level. 
all wrong. And understand, that's not me trying to defend Louis C.K. or Al Franken or whoever. But if we have the same level of outrage, we treat all these situations as if they are just at the same level. And let's say you're not playing favorites. You personally, you might be on the, hey, I want I want as much evidence as possible before I believe anything. Or you're on the, I have no reason to doubt these person's claims that the, the, the person they're accusing is a monster. We risk lessening the trauma of Cosby's accuser, Roy Moore's accusers, Polanski's accusers, insert, I mean, there's, there's a lot of people in the news right now and has been. Then I would love to know your opinion on the I don't remember it that way defense. We've been seeing that response from those accused more and more. What do you think about the miscommunication defense? Is is it valid? Do you think that it, it's understandable or it's bullshit? Also, what do you think is going to happen here for Al Franken? Do you think that he's going to have to step aside, step down? I'd love to know your thoughts in those comments down below. Then let's talk about the outrage around the trophy hunting ban reversal. So if you don't know, in 2015, a ban by President Obama banning importation of elephant hunting trophies in Africa went into effect. But it's now come out that the Trump administration has reversed that ban. And if you've seen the headlines, you know there has been mass outrage. Salon wrote the headline, Trump reverses Obama ban to allow his son's elephant hunt trophies. BuzzFeed writing, the decision reverses an Obama-era policy aimed at protecting endangered elephants targeted for ivory. Adam Best writing on Twitter, Obama protecting endangered elephants wasn't partisan. Some things aren't Democrat or Republican, just humanitarian. Trump reversing the ban on elephant trophies should disgust all Americans. So it's simple, right? Trump wants to let hunters kill an endangered species. The man is evil. Well, while there is no doubt in my mind that part of what powers Trump is his desire to remove Obama's legacy. It's not that simple, it's not that black and white. The first thing I wanna hit on is what the Obama ban did because a lot of people seem to be talking about this like it was just, it pertained to all elephants. Not the case, the Obama ban only stopped the importation of trophies from elephant hunting coming from Zambia and Zimbabwe. So that means two things. One, if you were a big game hunter, you could literally still go anywhere else with elephants, kill them, and then bring home those trophies. And two, you could still go to Zambia and Zimbabwe and hunt and kill elephants, but just from those two countries, you can bring the trophies back. And while the specifics of that ban may make it seem random, there was actually a humanitarian angle that makes sense. The reasoning for the ban was because in those regions, officials didn't provide requested documentation to show that A, trophy hunting was beneficial to the elephant population, and B, that the money was properly going to conservation efforts. As the Fish and Wildlife Services pointed out at the time, we do not have a good understanding of the ZPWMA, that's the Zimbabwean Parks and Wildlife Management Authority, their annual operation budget, how much is generated by elephant hunting, or how these funding levels impact the ability of ZPWMA to adequately implement the Parks and Wildlife Act, or to carry out day-to-day -day management activities, or anti-poaching efforts. So the United States' stance here wasn't that they were against trophy hunting, they just wanted to have documentation to, to see benefit. Because once again, even after Obama's ban, you could still go to another country in Africa, kill an elephant, bring home your trophy. And as far as why the United States is okay with this, according to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, legal well-regulated sport hunting as part of a sound management program can benefit the conservation of certain species by providing incentives to local communities to conserve the species and by putting much needed revenue back into conservation. But the big critique of this repeal is that Zambia and Zimbabwe have not shown any evidence that things have changed. Also, the timing of this seems incredibly odd since it seems that Zimbabwe is in the middle of a coup. So what about their overall situation makes you think they're going to manage the situation differently? And then of course, let's also talk about the argument that trophy hunting can be good. Pro hunting groups claim that trophy hunting can be beneficial to both the animals as well as local populations. And when done properly, there is evidence that trophy hunting does help populations. As far as how does this help the animals themselves? Well, what we've seen with some conservation efforts is that there are older animals that might be slowing down population growth. You have situations where you have very old bulls, they can no longer breed, and they're preventing the younger bulls from accessing the females. So if you're looking at it from a purely no feelings conservation effort, it makes sense. You have this old bull that obviously contributed but no longer adds to the group. In fact, from a conservation viewpoint, is hurting the group. So for a hell of a lot of money, which also incentivizes people protecting these animals, someone comes in with an immense amount of money, they pay to kill the animal. If set up properly, that money then goes to the local community, which allows them to thrive. In stories we looked into, the meat from that animal then can go to the locals. So with an elephant, you're talking about an amount of meat that could feed a village for weeks. But of course, there are people that still say that this is senseless killing. The Humane Society is saying, what kind of message does it send to say to the world that poor Africans who are struggling to survive cannot kill elephants in order to use or sell their parts to make a living? And it's just fine for rich Americans to lay the beasts for their tusks to keep as trophies. And then of course, once again, you have the main criticism here that Zimbabwe and Zambia have not shown changes. At least publicly, there appears to be no reason to think they have changed things up so that you get the upside. So why reverse the ban? And honestly, I think that is a very, very valid criticism. Because without seeing any real change, it does lead you to believe that maybe Trump and his administration are just doing this to do it. To undo what was done by his predecessor. Uh, until we see more information, it, it's hard not to think that. But with that story, the question I wanna pass on to you, what, what do you think about the reversal of the ban? What do you think about the general reaction from the public? But also, what is your opinion on trophy hunting? I'd love to know your thoughts on that. And that's actually where we're going to end today's show. And remember, if you liked this video, you like what I try and do on this channel, you wanna support independent media, go to defrancoelite.com, sign up, become a member, support what we're doing now and building for the future. Also remember, if you missed yesterday,
yesterday's Philip DeFranco show you want to catch up, click or tap right there to watch that. Or if you want to see the newest behind the scenes vlog, click or tap right there to watch that. But that's it, of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces and I'll see you tomorrow.